For the past 10 years, I've been using digital synthesizers and plugins just like many of you are right now until Novation kindly sent me my very first analog synthesizer. From the moment I received my Base Station 2, I was super excited trying out the presets, coming up with new sounds and the functions until it hit me. Wait a minute, I'm connecting this exactly like I would connect a microphone or a guitar to my audio interface and it's coming out as audio which means that I have to play everything live and in time and even if I manage to do that which I can't I only have two hands and I can't mess around with any of the knobs and buttons while playing live after a few hours I kind of gave up and accepted the fact that this is how it's gonna be but of course I wouldn't be here making this video if I hadn't find a way around it. So the main purpose of this video is to show you how you can connect your Base Station 2 or analog synthesizer to FL Studio and being able to input notes as MIDI into the piano roll and having a synthesizer reacting to it. Plus being able to automate every single parameter of the synthesizer directly inside FL Studio, again having the synth reacting to it. In addition, I will share a few tips and tricks for you to be able to set up your synthesizer correctly, for it to work right with FL Studio or any other DAW. And lastly, I will be sharing some of my improvising play around with the presets so you get an idea of what this synthesizer is capable of. Let's get right into it. Firstly, let's look at how I connect my base station to my computer. One USB cable goes from the synth to my PC to transfer the MIDI data, just like you would connect a MIDI keyboard. One instrument cable is going from my line output to my audio interface's input. And lastly, there is a power cable to power the synth independently. However, the USB will provide the power for you. You don't have to use this at the same time, but you can if you want to. Let's now move on to how I set up the synth in FL Studio. Go to Options, MIDI Settings, and in here, if you connected everything correctly, you should be able to see Base Station 2 in input and output section. I've set my port number for both input and output to number five. To be fair, I'm not sure if you have to put it on number five or not, but it's working out for me. So if you don't have number five taken by anything else, put it to number five too. Important thing to notice is to not check this enable button here for base station two, because we don't want it to be a MIDI controller. However, if you want to, you can use the keys as a MIDI controller too. One thing I need to mention before we carry on is that right now I'm demonstrating this whole video using the FL Studio ASIO input and output. And the reason is because OBS doesn't read the sound of my audio interface's dedicated driver from FL Studio, so you wouldn't hear anything from my FL Studio otherwise. And so using FL Studio ASIO, I'm selecting input number one and two on my audio interface as the input of FL Studio ASIO, which my synth is connected to. In your case and in my regular case, you would just connect and use your dedicated audio interface driver. And then in the mixer, exactly the way you would route a microphone or a guitar, you would select the track, click on the input up here and pick the input number that you connected your hardware to. In my case right now, it's number one, mono. So right now, if I press a key on my synth, you will see the signal coming in. And well, from here, you could just record whatever you want directly into FL Studio, the way you always do by clicking on the record button, audio into playlist. However, I'm not a great keyboard player at all. And even if you were and you could play everything live, you still couldn't touch any of these parameters at the same time and make the right decisions to manipulate the sound the way you like. Now we can move on so I can show you how to fix that problem. Inside the channel rack, click on the plus icon, go to MIDI and create a MIDI out plugin. We set the port for our synthesizer to port number five. So I'm gonna set my MIDI out plugin to port number five too. And now if I go to the piano roll and play any notes, you hear the same sound on the synthesizer is coming through the piano roll. So let's just put four simple notes. So the problem of playing live and in time is now fixed. One thing to mention while we're at it is that after routing this MIDI out plugin like so, I can actually use my MIDI keyboard to play the sounds from the synthesizer. And that's particularly handy if you need bigger octave range that your synthesizer doesn't have, 
but your MIDI keyboard has more keys for you to just play across the whole thing. Before we carry on, I have to get this out the way. If you're finding the video helpful, please drop a like and a comment. It goes a long way in helping the channel and helping me make more videos like this for you. Oh, and because I make a lot of helpful tutorials about FL Studio, mixing and mastering, production, plus going on live streams often to share my process of mixing a track or making a track and also sometimes listening to your tracks in my music review lives, it makes a lot of sense for you to subscribe to not miss out on any of these. All right, back to the video now. The next problem that we want to solve is to be able to automate each of these parameters that we want in FL Studio using automation clips rather than doing them live. That's also very simple to do directly inside the MIDI out plugin. Let's set up our main frequency cutoff knob. Click on the wrench icon beside one of these knobs, name it accordingly. And now to find out what's the CC number for that particular knob you want to automate on this particular synthesizer, you can either download the manual of the synthesizer or use this website that has the same information written down. I will link them both in the description. Our frequency knob is under the filter section. So we're going to look for the filter section here in the list. There it is. And then we've got frequency here. It says CC and number 16. So I'm gonna set my CC controller number to number 16 and press accept. Now we're gonna play our simple MIDI pattern and move the knob. From here, all you have to do to automate is to right click on that knob and create automation clip. The same process applies to all these other parameters with one slight difference in certain cases. You need to pay attention to whether the parameter number is a CC or an NRPN and choose the right thing in this list here. As you can see, we have CC and NRPN and some other stuff. So pay attention to what it says in front of the parameter and then the number. You have nine knobs available in page one and then you have eight pages to play around with. Set up everything that you think you will need to automate from your synthesizer and when you have them set up, click on the arrow, save preset as, name it base station 2 and then every time you open MIDI out, you can just go to presets and pick your preset and so everything is ready to go hassle free. When everything you want to do is ready with the notes and the automations, and now it's time to turn that MIDI into audio so you can move on and experiment with other sounds from the synthesizer. All you have to do is to make sure that track you routed your synthesizer to has the recording enabled using this red button. Then click on the record icon, audio into playlist as an audio clip. This delay that you can see happened is because I'm using FL Studio ASIO driver and not my audio interfaces. It's basically the same as recording any other thing. If you have stuff that's causing latency like limiters or if your buffer length is set a little bit higher, you're gonna have a delay, but let's shift it into position. And there we have it. Another super important thing before doing all these things that we've done in FL Studio, literally after connecting your synthesizer to your PC, is to go to the Components tab of Novation Products. I will also link this in the description. Here you will see every Novation product that you have connected to your system. I have the FL Key MIDI keyboard and the base station. You want to pay attention to the top right and make sure it says up to date. Usually when you buy the new product, it says that you need to update the firmware. Without doing that first, a lot of things won't work correctly. From there, you can click on Manage Base Station 2. Here you have six packs to choose from and send directly to your base station. If I want to change from my current pack to another pack, I just click on Send to Base Station 2. And it's now, as you can see on the keyboard, sending the patches through. All ready to go. Right now you won't hear any sound because I had to close my FL Studio for the Web Components tab to show my hardware. That's another thing to have in mind. In some cases you can't have them both open at the same time. So if you come to the Components tab and your hardware doesn't show up, make sure you close FL Studio or any other DAW first. But the presets have come through and you can change them using the arrows up top. You can also create your own banks or upload a previously created bank. Another useful software that you can have for your base station too is this base station 2 librarian that word is hard for me to say by the way here is very similar to the components tab with a couple extra options for example you can search for a patch name so you can see we have clicky sub here but if i want to find it without seeing it i can just type the name and it brings it up and if you double click on it here 
it sends that click is up patch to the base station too. Another thing you can do here is to create a patch of your own or maybe tweak some other patch that you're playing and you made some changes to. And instead of clicking save presets here, you can click on grabbed patches here and click on this green arrow that says grab up here. Then choose what you want to do with it. Add to grabbed patches folder, which basically saves it to this folder, which are your patches. I've recorded myself playing some of the random patches from my Novation base station too and messed around with some of the parameters live for you to get an idea of what this synthesizer is capable of. This is by no means an in-depth review of the sounds and the functions, but it should give you a general idea of what this is capable of. You can find some great videos posted by Novation on their YouTube going in depth about every little aspect of this synthesizer. And the reason I'm referring you to their videos if you want to learn in depth about each feature of the synth is because those guys made the thing and know it inside out. For me, it's just my first synthesizer that I had for almost almost a month and I've been messing around with it. As I mentioned at the start of the video, this is my very first analog synthesizer, so I don't have a frame of reference 
to say this is the best one I've had or is better than the other one, but here is what I can tell you. I haven't had any problems with the installation or the setup since the moment it arrived. It's been working flawlessly for me and it has definitely added a new dimension to my workflow. In terms of the keys, knobs and the built quality, it's definitely a couple levels higher than my MIDI keyboard. Modulation and pitch bend wheels feel much better compared to the MIDI and in general for the price of about 350 to 400 I think this unit can bring a new type of inspiration that you may not get with plugins. By no means am I saying plugins are bad, I'm just saying a new type of inspiration. That should do it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure you drop it in the comments. If you have any requests for any specific thing about the base station 2 that you want to see, drop it in the comments too and I will try to make a video for it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. To be aware.